In Photoshop, saving is such a critical component of your everyday workflow for photographers, designers, and artists. So I want to make sure you're doing it in the most efficient way possible. I'm going to cover the file extensions .png, .jpeg, and .psd. I'm going to talk about quality settings when you do save versus save as and JPEG. I'm also going to cover local versus cloud saving. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is open an image in Photoshop. And in previous videos, you've heard me say that going to file and open, though convenient, is probably one of the worst ways to do it if you want to, to do it visually. And we're artists, so why wouldn't we? Go down to Browse and Bridge. It's going to open up a nicer window where you can scale up the image size of the thumbnails. You can click on any one you want. And when you're clicking on one, it loads over here in the preview panel. And you can actually click with the magnifying glass and it will launch a loop so that you can check the detail and the focus of, of an image before you open it. There's so many reasons why I love Bridge. I'll get into that in a different video. Right now, I'm just going to double click. It'll open the image. I'm going to click fit screen because I look down here and I see I'm only at 33% of its resolution. So let me maximize my real estate here and really fill my screen with my image, whatever size that is. So here's the thing about saving. You need to do it often and regularly. Right now, if I were to go to image adjustments and convert it to black and white, and this is actually a black and white conversion, not just a automatic desaturate, which is very different. Let's say I want to make her dress. It looks a little gray. Let's make her dress a little bright. That's too bright. I blew out the highlight details somewhere in there. Maybe make the sky a little darker for added contrast. I click OK. And then I say, oh, I love that. I want to save it. So I go back up to file, go down to save. And well, I saw up here that it was saving, but it didn't ask me any questions. That's because it knew where to save it. And the bad thing is it just overwrote my file. So look at that. This was an original JPEG out of my camera. I don't get this back. Like this is gone forever as soon as I close this file. I can never fix it or go back to my original. That's why it's so important that you come up with a workflow for your saving. Now, luckily in a previous video, you have already learned that I can hit Command or Control Z and it will undo the last thing I did, which luckily was just that one thing. So now I can go back up to file and save and I'll go back to bridge. Okay. So let me interject. Photoshop has updated its save feature and how you can access saving as a JPEG. So I wanted to cover that real quick. So typically, like I've already saved this layered PSD file, but let's say I wanted to output this single file as a JPEG and I go up to file. Well, see, I don't even get the chance to save it. I can only save as. So when I click save as, look at my options. In this video, I tell you to toggle on this format and it only gives me three options right here, which, you know, this is for giant files. I think it's over two gigabytes, Photoshop PDF and a TIFF. So the only way to even access, oh, and obviously save to cloud, but the only way to even access saving it as a JPEG is you have to choose save as copy. So you click save as copy. It opens up the same dialog box, except it says save as copy at the top. Now, when you go to the format, now you get the normal long list where you can select JPEG. Remember, if you're saving it for the web, you've always got to save it as sRGB or your colors will not look right in any of the social media platforms and any internet browser. So always shoot in the biggest color space as always process in the biggest color space. But when you're outputting your images, make sure you embed the color profile of sRGB. But anyway, let me redo that because this is huge. When you go to file and you want to save an image and you come down, you won't see JPEG. You have to click save a copy and that will repopulate the same dialog box, but it titles it save a copy. And now when you go to format, you're able to click JPEG and watch what happens. When I click save, it's going to automatically save a copy of this, which means my PSD is still however it is, but this is going to give me a second new document in the location I decided as a JPEG. Generally, I always save at a maximum of 12. Remember, if you take it to a quality of 10, our eyeballs won't see the difference, but at a roughly, I can't even remember now, uh, take your file size down by like half. So click OK, and that way it's just saved all this as a copy. Because remember, you can't have layers in a JPEG. That's why it's a copy, because it's basically flattening your image. That was really lucky. For a moment there, I thought I'd lost my image, but I haven't. So let me go back to Photoshop. Now, let's say I want to do the same thing. Even though I know this is destructive, I know I just need to do a simple black and white conversion. I know exactly what I want. So I want to make that dress bright. I want to make that background darker. I'm going to click OK. But this time, I'm going to go to File and Save As. How do I want to save this? 
So this is the only exception to that rule of always having to click save a copy or save as a copy. If you're working on an image that has no layers and it's already a JPEG, as in you opened a JPEG file and I don't know why you would, but for whatever reason, you made some adjustments directly on the original background layer and then you're resaving it and you click save as. If you just click save, it's just gonna overwrite the original file, which as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you, you don't wanna do because it will overwrite and replace the original file. But let's say you're saving it as a different version, but it's still already a JPEG because it has no layers in the layers panel. When you click save as, it's actually gonna open up as the option of it already having the format of JPEG. You'll still get the save a copy or save as a copy button off to the right, but you don't need it because it, the, the format is already a JPEG. So you just keep going from there. I'm gonna come up by this .jpeg and I'm gonna click to the left of that dot and I'm gonna hit V2, which means version two for me. And the format automatically populated as JPEG because that's what was there before. There are no layers, so it can do it. And it's gonna maintain that sRGB profile, which is great for the web. Because it's a new file to be saved and I'm saving as JPEG, it's gonna give me some options. Typically just always keep it as a quality of 12 and click okay. All these other things are, are default and they're the most optimal. Click okay. Go back to bridge. Now I have a second version as V2, has the same name except for that V2, so there's keeping them in order so I can see them. Reopen this image. And then I was like, you know, I wanna do the opposite. I wanna make that dress dark. Let's go ahead and pull it darker. And let's make the sky brighter for more contrast. I really like, that's a crazy look, but I like it. So I'll go up to file. Now, if I click save, it's gonna overwrite the original file again. So I've always gotta to go to save as if I want to save a different version. Click to the left of the JPEG, hit V3, populate as JPEG, sRGB, click Save, click OK, go back to Bridge. Now I have a third file. So I have three files, my original, this one, and this one. And let me show you something. If you want an editable working file, use adjustment layers. Now remember, all of these adjustments are destructive. It means once you do them, save your file and close it, it's locked in forever. It's baked in permanently but you can get access to all these same things as forever editable adjustments, non-destructively, by coming over to this adjustment tab. If yours isn't open, just, just toggle it open. If you don't see it, go up to window and just put a check mark beside it. So here I can just click on the black and white adjustment layer and it's gonna add a, a layer with the layer mask. So I get the same controls. I can still make that dress dark. I can still make the sky light. Now here's the interesting thing. Watch what happens when I go to save. It's right now a JPEG and I'm not doing save as, I'm going to just save. Because it's never been saved as a Photoshop document, it's gonna automatically pull up the save as dialog box because it's never been saved. And it changed it from a JPEG to a .psd, which stands for Photoshop document. That's the native file extension for Photoshop that has layers. Now remember, you can share JPEGs with anybody. You can share PNGs with anybody, but Photoshop documents, .psd files can only be shared with people that have Photoshop. The great thing about Photoshop is it doesn't compress your file and it also maintains all editability on every layer that you save. So notice it changed the format automatically to Photoshop. I could change it back to JPEG, but it's gonna flatten everything and I'm gonna lose all the benefits. So it auto checks layers and I'm still gonna leave the sRGB profile and I'm gonna click save. Now here's the, the thing I want you to see. When I come back to bridge and I check out my images, these two are the same. So I'm gonna click and just drag it over so they're visually side by side. This one's the JPEG, look how big it is. It's three megs. I could easily email this file. This is a small file. Look at the .psd, which is essentially the same file. It's 104 megabytes. Do you see the difference? Because Photoshop does not compress your files. You have much more editable information in there to work with. .psd is the perfect working file. JPEG is the perfect export file. Like you're exporting it, you're sharing it, putting it on the web, on social media, Instagram, whatever. So again, I, I wanted to show you quickly that if I were to come to file and save as, I've been saving everything locally to my computer, but we now have a save to cloud documents button, which means it's gonna to link to your Adobe account so that you can save to the cloud and share between multiple devices if you're working on your iPad or your computer or a workstation at work and a workstation at home or someone else's workstation. It basically, you'll be able to share that document everywhere. I have a whole separate video for that but it's something I wanna make sure you're thinking of. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes!
Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.